So of course, inflammation plays a huge role in your metabolism, right? Inflammation is going to cause more cortisol to be secreted. <clears throat> High levels of cortisol, it's an anti-inflammatory, but it also creates a mobilization of sugar or glucose. So people think, well, like, oh, I'm, I'm not eating a whole bunch of glucose or carbohydrate, you know, but you could be surging a whole bunch of cortisol because of the inflammation and that cortisol could be mobilizing glucose. And so this is why it's important that if you are surging a little bit more inflammation, going for a walk, doing a little bit of a cross, not a cross, but a crossfit or an interval or some kind of a circuit training to kind of take that glucose and soak it up can be helpful because the higher that level of glucose is up because of inflammation, your cells get numb to insulin. So that same thing of eating too much carbohydrates that's driving up insulin, that same thing can actually happen from inflammation. So independent of just the carbohydrates. So you may have carbs coming in, let's say from gluten, right? But then you have the inflammation component, the more gluten sensitive you are, that can also surge more cortisol, which can then also create more glucose than what you actually ate in the actual bread to begin with. And that creates more insulin resistance, more, cor more cortisol mobilizing sugar. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And if you've got the cortisol issue, that's affecting your gut barrier further, which is then allowing infections to create more inflammation. So it can become a vicious cycle. What do you think about? So for me, I lost weight when I had all the gut infections, certain people will see they gain weight. And when you get rid of their infections, all of a sudden their weight normalizes and the 20 pounds they gain, go back to normal. Do you have any thoughts on why some people lose weight? Some people gain weight. Do you think it depends on the type of infection or, or what? Yes, it definitely depends on the type of infection. Um, it also depends on the individual. Some people can kind of be more prone to be in an ectomorph stage or they, as they have, go lower calorie, or as they have malabsorption, they drop weight. Some people gain weight. It's just, I don't really have a, an exact rhyme or reason why, I tend to see over time though, people will eventually start gaining weight over time. And whether it's gaining weight because their body fat goes up and their muscle mass goes down and their weight still stays the same, they're still gonna be losing high quality lean muscle mass over time. You're never gonna see someone's body fat drop and then also have their muscle mass go up or stay the same. So usually there's, gonna, there's still gonna be a reduction in their high quality muscle, even if they are dropping weight, you'll become more sarcopenic, right? Yeah, you may lose a little bit of weight, but you're also going to lose muscle mass, bone mass, etc. So in the short run, though, why you lost weight versus someone else, it's hard to say, you know, yeah. there's probably some genetic variations there. And that may be different from you in your 20s to you in your 50s, right? So maybe a variation of just where you're at metabolically. And as you get older, that may change. But either way, this is why we focus on body composition, when weight loss is occurring because you could have weight loss, but muscle mass is dropping, right? So the, bo the body composition really matters the most. And you can actually gain weight and have muscle mass drop as well. So this is a, these are important components to keep in mind. Muscle mass really matters the most. And it's one of those things, if you don't use it, you lose it. So that's why getting a little bit of move, whether it's push-ups or pull-ups or some body weight stuff, or we, do, we talk about doing some circuit stuff, some interval stuff to kind of keep those the muscle mass there is really, really, really important. Good answer. I definitely lost muscle. I definitely lost strength. Some people, they'll say, oh, I wish I had a parasite and I could lose 20 pounds without trying. It's like, no, you don't. Trust me, that's not a good way to lose weight at all. And the weight that you're losing is not body fat. Your body's going to hold on to that body fat. It's not like you're magically going to get six pack abs if you get gut bugs. Trust me. You're losing muscle, you're losing strength, you're losing, like you mentioned, po possibly bone density, bone strength as well. So not a good thing to have. And we know that just addressing those gut infections could be could be huge. So you mentioned the whole insulin cortisol connection, but a lot of what we would consider low hanging fruit for us because we do it all the time, every day, all day with people is we help them to test and fix gut infections. So if it's an H. pylori issue causing low stomach acid, you've then got the malabsorption of food the body sort of freaking out, looking for nutrients. It's like, okay, I'm not getting well fed, well nourished. Let's go into fat storage mode because we're not getting fed well. Even though the quality is good, it could be a grass fed steak. If the absorption is so bad, it can still trigger that fat storage mode in the body because you're, you're not getting the nutrients you need. 100%.